Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Should you learn Java in 2018? So people who watch my vlogs already know the answer to this. It really depends on two things. Number one, what type of programming you want to do. And number two, if there are jobs and opportunities in the area that you want to work in Java. You see, what you find with programming languages that the demand is somewhat regional. So in certain areas, Java will be popular. In certain other areas, PHP will be popular. In certain other areas, Ruby will be popular, which is nowhere. Ruby is not popular anymore. I'm just joking to tick off the Ruby people. Ruby does have some pockets here and there where it's popular, but that's fading. New hipsters are into JavaScript and the non-hipsters, people who just want to make a lot of money, are into PHP. Again, I'm taking little jabs at people for fun. I am language agnostic and you should be too. One of my main messages because it doesn't matter the programming language you learn first. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you understand your core programming concepts and you understand how to execute, how to write code in a clean way. These are concepts and techniques that are universal across all the languages. So let's get back to Java. Java is used mostly in legacy enterprise application development, which I'm going to get into in a second, and Android. But even with Android, that might be fading. So let's talk about the enterprise development. Enterprise just means very large corporations, big companies. Java was a new hot language back in the late 90s. And all these corporations, not all, but a huge number of corporations, big companies adopted Java. Now, because the big companies got involved with Java and because Java was designed by a committee where all these huge companies like Sun and Microsoft and IBM and BEA and all these other companies got in there, all these big companies got in there and they sort of tried to design the language via consensus of academic ivory tower nerds and huge corporations, Java became a huge mess, a big pile, and became very unusable, became super slow to develop in. And then you had a rebellion of many Java people and they, they got out of there. I think it was the uh, mid 2000s, early 2000s, and they went into, a lot of them went into Ruby and uh, elsewhere. So. What does this have to do with Java in 2018? It has to do where Java is today. Java is now something uh, relegated or I guess relegated to the big enterprise. Now, don't get me wrong, Java has been simplified to some extent. It got super complex and then Java developers rebelled against the uh, Java intelligentsia and then uh, it was simplified, largely through the spring framework, Rod Johnson. He wrote a book that was seminal, that was very important. I think it was called Smarter, Lighter, Faster Java, something like that. It's been a long time. I read the book. Anyway, in that book, he basically criticized mainstream enterprise Java development, said this, this sucks. And he came up with, which is the basis of the spring framework, which today I believe it is the most popular Java framework. It's the light and nimble Java framework. It's like the light and nimble 18 uh, wheeler. So now I've been talking about this and my camera is giving me a warning. What's the warning? The warning says it's going to be running out of something soon. I'm not sure what. Okay, so I'm going to try to get to the point. Yes, Java is very viable, but if you're going to get a Java job, you're going to be working for very large corporations, huge corporations. You're going to be working on projects that may last six months, a year, two years in big teams, large corporations, which means you're probably going to need a comp sci degree to get Java jobs. You're not going to use Java to do small app development or web apps for small and medium sized businesses. PHP dominates that. Maybe a bit of Python, maybe a bit of Ruby. PHP dominates that. Java also used for Android development as well. Again, there's uh, another language out there called Kotlin, I think it is. And Google just uh, said, okay, Good on that one, we're gonna use that. It's kind of like, it's basically uh, Java's answer to Swift for iOS. So you had Objective-C for iOS, which was heavy, old language. 
Apple realized this. They came up with Swift, great small dynamic language, kind of like Python, a bit like Python and other languages. Anyway, small, nimble, easy to program language for iOS. Now Kotlin does the same thing for Android development. Google has basically gave the thumbs up to it. I imagine people who are doing Android development are going to move over to this new language away from Java since it's faster, easier, lighter. Speed, ease of use always beats old legacy languages. That said, there's probably plenty of jobs right now in Android development with Java, but here's the thing, for a lot of app development in general, they're going to the web stack now versus native languages. Why? Because the web stack is very performant for 99% of apps that are being developed for smartphone devices. And if you develop natively in iOS or in uh, for Android in Java or Kotlin, then you're gonna have to rewrite the whole code base again for for iPhone, right? So you don't wanna write two code bases. So what they do is they do it with HTML5 in the web stack, and they run it through a translation matrix, and it works really well, and for 99% of apps, it's very performant, especially if you consider how fast smartphones are getting these days. So I would look at Java mainly for enterprise. Java is used in other areas in niche ways, I think, but generally speaking, you're looking Java for enterprise in 2018 and some Android development. It's a great language to learn nonetheless. It's such an important language. It's gonna be around for years. It used to be my favorite language in the late 90s, and early 2000s. And you can't lose learning Java, but understand if what the work trajectory is in terms of being a Java programmer versus, say, being a Ruby programmer or a PHP programmer or a JavaScript programmer. It is different, and you're probably going to need a CS degree, comp sci degree, or some sort of technical degree to be able to get a job working for somebody writing Java code. Not 100%, but probably will need that, whereas if you're doing PHP, no. You just need to show you got the skills and you're making money. It's a different thing. Everything is good. Everything has its purpose. Everything has its point. It all depends on what you want to do and uh, what your job's pro prospects are in terms of uh, your location. Don't forget that. I mentioned that earlier. You may be in a part of the world where there's no Java work. You may be in a part of the world where there's plenty of Java work. That I leave up to you to determine. All right. My camera's still on. Fantastic. But I will let you go. Bye-bye.